Hello and welcome to another episode of Three Black Brat Grads. I am Greg Claycorn. This is my bud Ken Nelson and Mark Skinner. We uh, all graduated from uh, Pratt Institute's uh, Fine Art Photography Program in uh, in Brooklyn. Oh, Pratt is in Brooklyn. So, yeah, and everybody. Yeah, we we grew up in Brooklyn. Brooklyn is uh, Brooklyn's Brooklyn. Um, and uh, we have a uh, years and years and decades of experience uh, in photography, uh, professional photography, uh, portraiture, landscapes, commercial, fine arts. And uh, we get together from time to time and we uh, just like to chew the fat, as they say, about uh, photography, what's new, what's happening. And uh, today's episode, we're going to be uh, doing kind of an introspective, um, since uh, we do uh, working on our silver lining here. Is this what they meant by so? Anyway, um, uh, so the topic is going to be uh, self-portraits or portraits in time, uh, changes in us and in our photographic vision. And I kind of left that open, but uh, I wanted to do some portraits or self-portraits to see what I look like and, uh, you know, just get an opportunity to chat about, uh, you know, for how we have changed and how photography has moved along with us since we're all still shooting. And uh, we're gonna open up the forum. Uh, first up, we got uh, Mr. Nelson. You got, what do you got for us today, Ken? Okay, well, I took you metaphorically, not literally. So therefore, uh, what I've decided to do is just give you portraits in time, <laughs> okay? okay? And we sort of go chronologically, I guess, the early, my early stuff and uh, things that were interesting me. And of course, um, I'm going to try and spend no more. I have a few of these, but I'm not going to spend any more than 30 seconds on each one of these so so I can get them okay. them quickly. Uh, um, basically, hanging in my neighborhood, seeing what's out there, recording what I see uh, and, you know, being involved uh, with uh, being actively involved in the neighborhood. So uh, just going around the neighborhood, seeing and, and this is a uh, playground. Uh, well, not necessarily a playground, but a place to play for the kids in the neighborhood. And it was a pretty dangerous place. So, uh, Grain Terminal. So that's a Grain Terminal. All right. So Greg will understand what that is. Oh, yeah. Um, that grain Terminal. Was, yeah. It was a lot of fun, but God, it was easy to die. <laughs> Annually, every year, uh, every year, people gather around in, uh, in New York City. And of course, there are tons of parades. So this just happens to be one of the parades in the city. Uh, the Thanksgiving Day Parade, and uh, uh, in my early years, these are in the 80s, and so um, I have a vision as to what I'm looking for and seeing things that are unusual that are happening, and of course, um, a mountain of people is kind of interesting to see, so uh, you know, begin recording that. You know. uh, walking the city, and it's kind of interesting though, when you're walking the city, you're actually walking the city, and so uh, I don't do too many self-portraits, but this just happens to be one of my self-portraits that I did back in the 80s um, in the waterfront, the Red Hook waterfront. Uh, so I'm still investigating the city and, and walking around and just, uh, you know, I, I think I, if you look behind me in this photograph, you'll see some wooden pallets. That sort of gives you the idea of where I'm at. And, and I'm always in an industrial place. And, and it's funny because Red Hook is an industrial neighborhood and I moved from one industrial neighborhood to another. So, uh, you know, that sort of history follows me around. Uh, then, you know, in the, still in the 80s, um, things are happening. And so I'm not necessarily a person who stays in the neighborhood, but I always venture out. So one of the places to venture out was Central Park. All right, so tourist Mecca, but I never saw it as that. I just saw it as a place to relax and enjoy and also skate. So I was an avid skater. Uh, and of course, I, during the period of time, I, was, I, I didn't photograph as much. So I decided, let me switch that back around and begin skating less and photographing more. Uh, all these are in film. So uh, as you can see, I've engrossed myself in black and white and color during those times. So I had no preference for one or the other. One was easier to do. The other one wasn't. Uh, still in the 80s, we're in Brooklyn again, so my vision still is just looking at people, seeing what people do, and uh, just creating odd senses of, uh, of wonder uh, as people do their things in the city. And uh, of course, I love gravitating to, to young men and young kids, so uh, just this, just this is a kind of an interesting play on uh, uh, an inquisitive mind. 
uh, you know, and what an inquisitive mind is capable of doing what they will do. I, I just thought this was kind of an interesting uh, view to see. You, you guys know where this is. This is Prospect Park, Brooklyn. And then as we go through uh, years of uh, training and learning, and this is uh, about the period in time in which I started to actually be, actively use uh, large format photography. And one of the unique things about this is that how do you integrate large format photography with street photography? Well, <laughs> this is me trying to do that. <laughs> Okay, and I just thought that that was a it's an interesting thing to do, you know. It's like if, yeah, I'm always challenging myself. It's like yeah, what? Who in the right mind would do large format four by five street? Well, Why here not? I am in the 80s, here I am in the eighties attempting to do it, and uh, uh, you know, um, again, this is the Thanksgiving Day parade, but this is another another year, a separate year. Uh, and so, and again, so not to belabor the point, but we jumped uh, decades, and so we go to the year 21, 2021, because <laughs> I don't want to belabor the point in those middle years. And so, again, okay. me experimenting digitally, switch, and now I'm shooting digitally, uh, and uh, using perspective and, you know, making things happen and wondering how to view things in a different way. Uh, not necessarily just uh, one at a time, but in a constant uh, vision of seeing things from a, a different perspective, not just one time out of a thousand, but actually five times out of 10, you know, to, you know, 50 percent of the time you want to see what this perspective look like, investigate it. <clears throat> and other time, again, experimenting, always experimenting. What happens uh, because we're always looking for sharp things? Well, what happens when you don't look for sharp things and all you want is fuzzy? So this is my experimentation into nothing in focus. And so in 2020s, I was like, okay, what happens if nothing is in focus? Then what are you what are you relegated to to looking at? You're still looking at shapes and forms, right? So my experimentation, I, I went out a couple of times and and challenged myself to do that. And of, and of course, this is uh, something similar. To, well, again, challenging myself to. To just think about what people are doing and, and wondering why people do things. And uh, this is my, of course, throwaway society series, which I'm photographing just how people left their paper uh, coffee cups uh, in the street and never decided to throw them away. I just think that's an interesting play on people and what people are capable of doing. Uh, <clears throat> and then this will be my last one. And that's, of course, is one of, again, a self-portrait, which I think is how I would like to represent myself in a, in a photograph, close up, extreme. Uh, I think my skin looks pretty damn good, so I love this shot. <laughs> this okay. is one of my favorite self-portraits. Uh, and not not fully, uh, you're, I'm engaged in, in looking at the viewer, but you, you can't see both the eyes and of course the, the bokeh is part of the uh, appeal and so forth and so on. So. Uh, this is what I got. So that is uh, a quick uh, self-portrait uh, through the years, skipping many decades, but nonetheless gives you a, a little bit of slice of uh, what it is. Okay, I got a question. Did, did uh, the large format outdoors or street scenes, um, was that while you were still at Pratt or was this was after? This is while I was at Pratt. Okay. So uh, right. this was shot, this was photographed in, uh, I think it was 87, so I'm still at Pratt. Okay. Yeah, I, li I love that photograph quite a bit because, uh, you know, I think, you know, we all had those uh, new cameras that we had at Pratt that we could walk around with. And, and what was really kind of neat was that you, you could go around and photograph landscapes and cityscapes and use the tilts and the, and the swings to get the get the perspective right and I think this is a, a fantastic use of that camera because you're like you said you're really challenging yourself and I, I and I, uh, I applaud you for really going into such a crowded area and then putting that tripod I mean it was one of those old tilt halls so you, yeah. you took up a lot of space so yeah. I, gotta, I gotta hand it to you you really you really did extraordinarily well uh with this and it's such a an iconic area I mean anyone who who travels through Midtown, we know exactly where that is. And, be, and, and you know, the New York Coliseum isn't there anymore, but you right. don't have the New York Coliseum in that photo. And, right. and, and that uh, young lady's uh, skull that's on the, the young lady that's riding piggyback on the man, 
she's where that um, that imitation unisphere would be. So, you know, yes. this photo is like a harbinger of what was to come. It's really uh, yeah. amazing. It, it, photographs, they hold an amazing oh, amount of uh, information in terms of history. Uh, right. So over a period of time, when you realize that if you've been in a spot, nothing is as it was. Oh, right. The only thing that is as it was is the buildings on the right. The building in the center and the building on the left are totally different now. OK, time capsule. This is right. portraits in time. So it's just it's not just portraits of yourself. It's portrait of the city you captured. Yeah you know, uh, slice of the city in time too. Coliseum, wow, I haven't even heard that name in a long time. <laughs> well, they, they, replaced, they replaced it with the Javits Center on the west side, so. Wow, wow, I didn't even, I was like, wait though, the New York Coliseum, holy moly. I mean, oof, all right, <laughs> that's going on the way back machine. Hey, um, good stuff, oh, sorry about that. Good stuff, Ken, um, anything Thanks. else you wanna add or anything you wanna add, Mr. Skinner? No, I, I like I said. I think that I think that view camera photograph is absolutely fantastic. Uh, everything else is pretty good too, but I think that 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 view camera photograph is just that's amazing. that's the one for me. You were you've always been a kind of a large format guy, uh, ultra sharp, everything at home. Okay, all right, moving right along. Let's gonna gonna turn to our turn our uh, turn our lenses on, Mr. Skinner. Self portraits or self portraits or portraits in time. What have you got for us? Have you noticed changes in you and your vision? Uh, that kind of goes for both of you, but I'll ask that at the end. But where where are you now, Mark? Oh, well, I wear bifocals now, and uh, previously <laughs> I did not. Uh, and uh, you'll actually see a photograph in the middle at a time when I was just finishing up wearing contact lenses. So this is a photograph I did. This is either 85 or 86 when I was at Pratt in the Pratt studio. This was a scanned chrome. It's an ectochrome, um, probably ectochrome 64. Um, and this is just as I photographed. It was a self-portrait. There were It was done with film, and there were no uh, flipping uh, backs where you could see what you were getting. So I was off to the right there. <laughs> so, you know, there were a bunch of photographs over there. Uh, that we did. Uh, yeah, I did a bunch of photographs. And, and, and the funny thing is, is that, uh, you know, you had to guess the focus. There was no autofocus. Uh, you had to kind of know your stuff. And this kind of shows you what was available in the studio, because this was one of the Comet. Uh, they had the two, they had a Comet power pack with two heads. And those, and, and this is a photograph that was taken with one of the comet lights bouncing off one of the huge wooden flats on wheels that they had. These two, two big flats, and that was kind of really it. And they had a boom too, but this was really it. And uh, I think the seamless is gray seamless. It's the thunder gray. I had to buy that myself uh, because they didn't really have seamless uh, when I was there. Um, and it was great. And it's funny you you had done something with the view camera. I, I really really wish that. Uh, the, at the time, the the program really included real use of that view camera in a studio setting. They had the view camera and they had the studio, uh, but they didn't have sufficient lighting and 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 expertise to really, you know, give that to us. So I'm sure since then they've corrected that era, but that's life. Anyway, the next one, and you can see I was being artistic. I think th those are in the days of uh, was it Basquiat and Keith Haring and. And uh, Willie Ware, and those were the people who were really famous at the time. Uh, Mark Kasabi. Willie really Ware. Yeah. <laughs> I think out of the four people I mentioned, maybe Mark Kasabi might be the only one that's still alive. Um, if he wow. is, I haven't looked. Um, this, believe it or not, skips way past the 90s because. As you guys knows, but no, as you guys know, but probably some of the people who have uh, watched some of our videos may not know. For about 11 years, I didn't do any photography at all. Uh, ironically, I worked for Minolta, which is a camera company, but I worked for them uh, maybe a few years of uh, maybe six, seven years before they got rid of their camera uh, division and sent it to sold it to Sony. And maybe two or three years after that, I don't know the exact time when they did that. But I started taking photographs again when I left, uh, uh, what do you call it, Minolta. But 
a little bit before that, when kids were born, you know, every parent has to get a camera. And as a former, at the time, professional photographer, it didn't seem right to use a smartphone or a uh, or a film camera and drop it all the film off at a drugstore. You know, I started. I, I got a, a what do they call these things up. Uh, a D90, a Nikon D90. This probably was not taken with that. This was probably taken with a later camera. But after that, I started taking photographs again. I started weddings and sports and some still lives and, and some pageantry. And you guys know all that. But this photo was one when I started, I took in probably about 2011, 2012, maybe 20, in that area, just after the, the, the aughts. And I did this because uh, a lot of people were uh, using filters religiously. I mean, we talked about filters a few, like a week ago or two weeks ago. And we talked about, you know, you know, people were using filters religiously. And I really missed black and white. And in this particular photo, someone had asked me, how did you do that? And I was so happy with this. I was like, well, it's what I do. But I'll tell everyone how I did this really quickly. I took a photograph of myself in a giant uh, V-flat that was made of two big pieces of uh, styrofoam, right? So I created the wall, right, out of multiple pieces of styrofoam, uh, the mm -hmm. foam core, I should say. And then there was the V, it was all white. I photographed myself with... Uh, I think it was a big, beauty, big, huge, not beauty dish, but it was a big soft box and a reflector card underneath. And then I used, I converted it to black and white because those, those days there weren't any black and white photographs, uh, cameras rather. And uh, because we went to Pratt and I loved the way they would have us file the negative carrier so that it would, you'd look like you had the entire image on your print. I converted this to a square because I was always a fan of the Hasselblad. And I, quite honestly, I'd miss my Hasselblad film camera by that time. I had one for a brief amount of time. Uh, and then uh, uh, I missed using it for things that were serious. And so I made it a square. <coughs> and after that, it was really a lot, a lot of fun. Long story short, this was used for my... Uh, Icon, I think it was Facebook, um, Instagram, things like that. You can go to the next one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this one, we, I showed this one before. This was uh, about two years ago when the pandemic was uh, just beginning. This was around May. And uh, I photographed, this is the entire, uh, what do you call it, the entire frame, no cropping or anything like that. This is a red piece of seamless that I dropped in behind me and a uh, big umbrella, uh, white umbrella that uh, was used with a, with a white uh, uh, cover on it to make it to, to like a sock. And what was really nice was uh, uh, by then I really understood what I needed to do in a studio. I had photographed a lot of uh, a lot of pageantry, a lot of uh, models, a lot of still life. Um, uh, and uh, by the time we were there, I was just getting ready to kind of reboot my career again. And the, the pandemic happened. And so this was kind of a little bit of trepidation. Kind of see. Kind of You're breaking up a little, Mark. You muted your, you muted your volume. You muted your mic. I'm sorry. Is that, is that better? Yeah. Yeah. That's better. I'm sorry. Yeah. So this was a this was a photograph that was uh, it was at a time when I was very very much afraid for the lives of myself, my wife, my family, my children rather, and uh, I just kind of took this photograph just to have a record because we had no idea what was going to happen in the next two years. You know, uh, thankfully for us. Uh, we made it through. Uh, we, we, you know, we did lose some people we knew, but uh, at the same time, for us as a family unit, uh, we did okay. And uh, so, looking back at it, you kind of look and go, "Oh wow." Um, that's where I was. That's really yeah. That's where I was. Yeah. 
So I took your I took your prompt literally and provided self portraits. I'm not really a selfie guy. I mean, you guys have seen one or two. I had one one in Disney World, one in a car. You know, I may I must have done about seven selfies total, and I'm really guessing at that point in my life. Well, I, I, I left it open, you know, to yeah. interpretation. Uh, yeah. I hope I wasn't too literal in what I'm saying, because, no. you know, you could you get a shot at grapefruit, you know, or. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I want Brooklyn I want, Bridge. I you know, and I, every time we have these sort of things, I kind of go, well, I want to do this a little differently. But I figured this way, if you said self-portrait, uh, it would really be a challenge for me to even dig up real self-portraits. So I figured uh -huh. let's see if I could find some, and uh, I did so. So there you go, 19, mid-80s, the, the, the 2010s, and then yeah. 2020. Okay, so Mark, my question to you is, mm -hmm. someone who's never met you, doesn't know you from squat, walks into a gallery or walks in or even just visit your website or something like that and sees this particular image right what do you hope they would walk away from after seeing this image what do you think their impressions might be what do you hope their impressions might be if they were to see this image well you know it's interesting because you kind of wonder what what's the aspiration of the young person who's taking this photograph because this is uh, what, 35 years ago at this point? Almost, good lord. Almost 40? Yeah, it's almost 30, 30 something years. So I would say um, that this person sees them, takes themselves very seriously. This person uh, sees themselves as kind of cool, kind of a hipster. And I'm, I, you know, I'm talking as an old man now looking at a young person uh, and how I dress <laughs> as a young person, you know, and they, you know, they, they see themselves as really rather sophisticated. Because remember, this is right when hip hop was kind of starting and it was a fringe experience. You know, a lot, a lot of people weren't, you know, it, it didn't cover everything like it does now. So in mm -hmm. a weird way, uh, you know, everyone was a little bit more uh, able to be into niches. You know, these days, uh, hip hop is so pervasive that it is kind of the dominant music force in the United States right now. So everybody is kind of influenced by that. But previously, okay. nobody was. So come back, Mark. Come back. No, no. Well, I mean, here's the thing. My point is, is that uh, you know, as an African American, I I, I found that. Uh, uh, in some ways, uh, we were a little bit more diverse in who we were then. And I would say this person was, uh, yeah, yeah I, I'd say so. I, I'd say we these days now we're a little bit more uh, or, uh, we are a little bit more monolithic in our perspective than we were then. And we were monolith more monolithic in how we were treated prior to when we went to school. Okay. All right. So, I, yeah, I. It's okay. I. I. It's it's very difficult for you to perceive what someone is going to think about think, when yeah. they look at your image. Right. And it's it's very. I over the years, Mark, I've realized this. It's just it's hard to to interpret that in any way it really is because you have to get in the mindset of the person who's looking and right. it's I, I just realized that it's People just, are it's, just it, it's really difficult to do uh be, because it's it's tough to get out of your head what your perspective is and right. i'm just trying i'm trying to reach for that and every time we've talked and every time i've asked you right. your answers almost always go back to inside your head they never almost your responses are hardly ever outside your head. Well, if you want a totally objective uh, answer to this, I'd say no subjective, wow. totally subjective from another person totally. who doesn't know say, you. I would say this photo. I would say this photo either needs to be more centered or it needs more copy. Otherwise, it's about <laughs> okay. It. All right. So you're gonna be you're gonna be technical about it. That's fine. Well, well, okay. That's, that's really what I would say. I mean, if you really kind okay. of. But what would I say? What would I say if I just saw this person? I mean, today I would have a different. I would have a different perspective than I had then, and that's really the thing. You know, now uh, this is it's a different type of person. He's not a per. He's not. Um, he's not someone who uh, he, you know is really part of you know uh, a particular movement. Kind of. Okay. It's, different. it's different. It's just a different 
It's just different time. Okay. All right. Okay. To be 100% we'll honest. Have to, we'll have to pick up the uh, psych profile in, that, in another episode. Well, I mean, you, oh, you asked me a philosophical question, so I gave you a very lengthy philosophical answer. I apologize to you for that. But uh, it's interesting that, you know, I wouldn't even can show this in a museum you know i only showed this because you guys asked for self-portraits okay all right let's Every, let's, thank let's, you for that. let's move on yeah because we're, we're running short on time <laughs> okay wait um, we're finished talking about me no go ahead <laughs> uh, yeah right we can go back to enough me of, enough about you what do you think of my hair <laughs> um, <laughs> me later so <laughs> i i uh i'll just i'll just do my quick and dirty but you know self-portraits or portraits in time uh you know you, you live life you 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 go through things you know and sometimes you come out a different person sometimes you don't you know and, uh, you have traits uh, visual uh, acuities and such and uh some things stick with you and some things uh uh don't you know life happens and that's that's i think what i was really trying to get at um that first one uh is uh me blowing bubbles in red oak Oh my God, what in the hell? But uh, always had a thing for bubbles. I don't know, I always had a thing for kids, you know, always had a thing for, um, you know, trying to keep the, in touch with that, um, you know, not childish, but the younger side of you to keep you young and keep you vibrant. I've always gotten a kick out of, you know, the spectral thing of bubbles and floating away, but uh, I know it's it's a little, little unusual, but, Hey, hey, I got a thing for bubbles. So next, what's the next one up? My Craig eccentricities. Huh? Yeah. Great cool. eccentricities. That, is that really a self-portrait or does someone take that of you? No, someone I took the photograph. Yeah, Ken, Ken shot that. But uh, okay. I, like, I liked it as a portrait in time because it's something that, that uh, kind of stays with me. You know, I, I like, um, you know, what? Small animals and kids are attracted to me, and um, I, you know, when I had a great time with my son when he was little, we just go around, go for walks, put him on my shoulders, and you know, off we went. Um, so that was a that was a that was kind of an important uh, a portrait in time, you know, Red Hook, and it was uh, you know Brooklyn, you know, it was a full on Brooklyn, and um, you know, you you have uh, your dreams, you know, and 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 the uh, idea of a bubble you know your dreams and you're you're pursuing your dreams this was uh you know the big early years of pratt and uh, full of dreams and uh, full of aspirations and i was uh you know heading out to to uh to uh pursue them you know okay next one please uh which which one is this i lost my screen oh um uh, boxing gloves boxing gloves yeah they were they were Actually, and, this is what I was asking about if someone had photographed you or you photographed yourself. Uh, I think, I, you know, I don't remember with that one. That one could have been a set. I don't remember. I really don't remember <laughs> taking that picture. <laughs> but, uh, but there it is. You know, you, you get out into the world and, you know, you have to fight through uh, different things. And um, visually, uh, you know, just keep your guard up, you know, because there's always, you know, something going on. And. You know, you never know when you have to, you know, defend yourself or something. Um, okay, next one is, uh, which one is the next one? Uh, uh, the uh, flag scarf. Flag scarf. Okay, I was, uh, that was part of my uh, cross-country trip, you know, and I was, uh, I don't know, I was having fun. It was like, uh, it was my cross-country. I was going across America, you know, like a, you know, like a journalist trip, a writer's trip, a photographer's trip, and I, you know, it was, uh, it was fun, but it was a little scary. You know, my family was worried about me. They were like, oh, my God, don't, don't, don't show up on CNN. Don't disappear. Keep in touch. Don't, don't give us your location. When you, I'm like, wow. You know, it, it is it's kind a, of a little. It's a scary uh, photograph, Greg. Is it? Yeah, in the background, there's a couple of things happening that are really scary. Yeah, yeah. The, the, um, the Halloween uh, stuff. The Halloween actually. stuff, yeah. It's, it's, it's. Pretty scary. Yeah, it's creepy. You know, it's you, the you news to... that scares me. Yeah, it, that, well, that's. I don't want to bring it up, that, but huh? yeah, I think I, yeah. I think it was well, self-apparent. But <laughs> I understand. I understand. You know, there's, there's there was a lot of trepidation. You know, I only got pulled over three times all the way across country. Took some pictures with the ponies. Um, I only went into one neighborhood that I kind of busted a U and headed out of there. But um, 
It was a, a, a portrait in time again. You know, I'm wrapped in America, you know, wrapped in the American flag and stars and stripes anyway. Um, but right over my shoulder, you know, it's reality of, of sorts. And it can be, a, you know, fun. It can be fun and creepy at the same time. So um, that's what that was what I was hoping to capture in that um, portrait in time. And it's kind of, you know, not, not that my photography has gotten dark or anything, but it got a little moody, you know, because it wasn't, uh, you know, after certain trials and, you know, working in places and being told, uh, you know, oh, you're a great click when you when you show up in person after the sound great over the phone and uh, different different things, you know, uh, similar to that where, you know, you, you don't think about, you think, you know, Martin Luther King's, you know, the qual quantity or your quality of your character instead of, um, you know, the color of your skin, but this is reality, baby. <laughs> so, um, good, next picture, where are we? Um, in the mask on the sub, oh no, in the, I'm what? sorry. No, you're on a. No. Uh, God, oh, what is the this? Map. I don't know. You're yeah, in a yeah. subway. You're no, in a train. No, it, it was probably a train. Um, it, it's uh, you know, again, like like you were experiencing. You know, you go through the. Uh, it looks uh, like you got, uh, looks like you've got anvil cases of gear behind you. Yeah. 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 It, it it was about the. Mask, you're in a bus station you know? or a train station. That's fine. You know, I'm, I I got back into traveling. I've I've, I've always enjoyed traveling, even a short haul or long haul. And uh, the uh, COVID just kind of threw a monkey wrench in all of that. You know, tropping around with a mask everywhere you went was was uh, kind of different and a little little got a little dark. You know, I, I felt like kind of like a a um, graphic novel, you know, almost like a Batman episode. You know where. Where a supervillain releases a you know biological agent into Gotham City, and you know we're all walking around in masks. So I kind of wanted to capture at least a couple of those images uh, in in my uh, self-portrait in time. So go ahead, go to the next one. Okay, you're on the bus with a smile and the yeah, mask. Yeah, right. Well, that was before the bus driver got on, I think, and uh, <laughs> and uh, it was. Uh, you know, I was just happy to be on the road again, being out and about. And uh, uh, I, I can't say that that says much about uh, my, a portrait in time other than, you know, I was getting back out, you know, spending time, you know, not actually um, dealing with life, but kind of, you know, the road has always been like a kind of a meditation place or an escape for me. So uh, I wanted to document that. Go ahead, next picture, please. Okay, scuba gear. Scuba water. Always love water. Always will love water. Um, it's it's fun, but it's dark and scary sometimes. I, I didn't want a lot of detail in there. I was kind of more of a memory, and uh, so I put the sun behind me and uh, kept my face not very well lit because um, you know things happen. You know it's dark. I was getting into a dark place, kind of, you know, as uh, you know, some dealing with some depression and and uh, you know different things. You know, life throws curves, and you gotta, you know, stay on the road. Um, but sometimes you pull over, <laughs> and uh, well, you know, a tropical vacation is a good way to get rid of the blues. Yeah, it, it was kind of a mixed bag because it wasn't. It was not what I expected. Um, it was beautiful, but you know, it was it was just different. So, okay, next image. I do love the water. I'm always going to be about okay. the water. Yeah, and there you are against the water. Oh, with which that one is this serious one? look on your face. Ah, uh, this is the portrait, or close up the, the close up portrait. Yeah, close up portrait. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, that was uh, big. You know, like uh, is kind of my happy place, but um, you know, life. You know, it's it's not. Uh, I'm not blowing bubbles, if you noticed. <laughs> Oh, you know. So, uh, I noticed, yeah. progressively, you know, when you started, you started, you had blowing bubbles. I was a little worried. Uh, you had a noose at the same. Yeah, you know, I was like, this is a succession of, uh, of photos that are not really. This is going to a dark place. Yeah, you know, I I, uh, I have you know there are a lot of twists and turns. You know, I've I've had you know really good successes and some pretty weird um, disappointments. You know, and. Uh, I've been trying to lately. Uh, I, go ahead, you could drop it. I'm I'm good. Um, mm -hmm. 
but that one I really wanted to look square into the lens and I wanted the viewer just to look right into my eyes and try to, you know, feel, you know, what I had been through. And there's really no way to do it because I've been kind of studying films that are out now and there's always that moment when the person stops look you expect them to say something to tell you the story of what's going on in their head and then they walk off camera and you're like was that the moment that something twisted or something turned you know and and again like it's like we were talking you know, with mark stuff it's just everything is so up to interpretation that um you know, one person would look at it, you know, like a like a Chuck Close uh, portrait where people are like. <laughs> well, you know, it, it does remind me so much of Chuck Close as much as it reminds me of an old time man of the year. Uh, the, back when it was before his personal of the year, it was man of the year painting. And it's, so, it's almost like you're you you have your own copper mine somewhere and and you've you've, you know, found a way to give uh in, you know, or a nickel mine, and you found a way to give inexpensive copper and nickel to the entire world and still make a zillion dollars. You know? And it looks like that? And, yeah, it looks like one of those covers, you know, like, you know, and, and you found a way to do it, and, and at the same time, it's ecologically safe for the environment, that kind of thing. It's like, a, you know, the immediacy of the of your face square on to the, to the, uh, the, the the image and then there's just the 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 ocean and the rocks uh framing your uh your face with you know, obviously your shoulders are there too but it does remind me of those those old illustrations of the time magazine this is exactly why i love photography because i can ask 100 people and you get 100 opinions and i don't know where that came from but it's cool <laughs> yeah and the, the only you know, takeaway my takeaway would be that of the images that you've shown yourself portraits, it's I think one of the things that I take away is that there is an intentional engagement with your eyes to the camera. You know, oh. you, you're actually asking to be engaged where uh, it's not necessarily that apparent when other people look into the camera that they're asked to be engaged. They're just mm -hmm. looking. But you actually asked the question. Uh, I think, at least with the images that you've shown today, that there's you're you're asking for the viewer to engage you, where mm -hmm. it's not a passive thing; it's actually an active thing on your part. So I thought that right, came. Yes. It did cool. came. Thank it came through. That. Yeah, it that came through in all, no, all the ones where you're no engaging. Place. Yeah. Yeah. Some place you, else to look. But I, well, yeah, I've got a question yeah. for both of you and Ken. And it's uncomfortable because you didn't you know, it's show, uncomfortable to, yeah. you show that many to look at somebody. I, I'm just saying it, it's uncomfortable, even you know, normal, even with your friends. You know, you don't just sit there and Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you don't. Yeah. It's it's, well, it's I, uncomfortable. I, I, yeah. Well, I have a question for you for both of you. Sure. Uh have you found and it's kind of kind of an offshoot of what what Ken had asked. I mean, over the years, Ken, you didn't show any of your really early uh, self-portraits that you did of yourself while you were in Pratt. And, and right. the, the question I have for you guys, has your idea about what constitutes a uh, self-portrait, a, a, I don't want to say legitimate, but a righteous self-portrait as opposed to what people call selfies, has that changed? Because we're all photographers. And we're all photographers before everyone had a photographer in their pocket. I mean, a camera in their pocket. And, and so at the, at the, in that. See what you're doing that again. Go there, ahead. There's a, there is the question of how does your perspective change when, number one, now everyone is doing primarily self-portraits. And it was kind of like a big deal for us to do a self-portrait. Am I wrong? Right? It was like a. Wow, this person, I mean, Cindy Sherman made an entire career photographing right. herself, right? I mean, as, right. as characters right. and using herself as her own muse. So, that, you know, it's, it was an entire artistic way of seeing. And, and so, how did that, has that changed for you guys over the years? 
But do you, you're using that dangerous word again. You're you're calling it a righteous as if there are unrighteous self-portraits. That's kind of creepy for me, but go ahead. Well, the reason why I say righteous as opposed to legitimate or any any one that you would say is an official doc, because let's face it, when you create a photograph, there are some photographs that we photograph that we know that we create that we know are throwaway throw photographs. And there are some photographs we're documenting something. Right. Even Photoshop calls an image a document. And then there are other photographs where we're creating an art piece. Uh, and so what I'm saying is not the throwaway images, but the document or the art piece of the, you know, how has that changed for you in creating self-portraits uh, since we were at Pratt? How has that changed for you? You got anything, Ken? I'm still thinking. I'm still trying to formulate well, a question. The answer. I mean, for for me, a, a portrait, um, a serious self-portrait, uh, which I could do with a with a with my iPhone, it's it's uh, it's it's all about light. You know how you how you choose to let light define the subject. You know, like now I got this, but I would love to have a whiteboard right here to fill in all of this. Yeah, you know, or you know, something give me a nice halo light or something to a black flag to cut the light on the background. You know, when I when I think of a, the difference between the way I look at a portrait now, you know, I get a kick out of looking at um, uh, how people are photographing now. You know, the okay. serious self portrait, the serious and the self portrait. Say again? Specifically the selfie and the self-portrait. Well, it's taken, selfies have taken on a life of their own. Right. You know, people are doing their own thing. And sometimes they discover light. You know, and that for me is, is a special moment when you actually start seeing light. Um, but a portrait, the portrait for me, I, I, I keep thinking of a, Velasquez paintings or uh, or Vermeer or something, you know, where they, you know, every every element is intentional. You know, it's not just haphazard, you know, any kind of light. It's usually unit one direction or the light's coming from everywhere. And it makes it look like the light is coming out of the subject. So it's when you when you start exploring with light is when you and I, I I wasn't there. I began to see it when I was at Pratt, but I developed and started seeking out, you know, like Ken hitting the streets, you know, because I mean you do some street shots, it's like you get a couple of good ones. It's like, eh, I think I I think I'm good. I'm ready to move on to landscape. Uh, every day is different, you know, and every every situation you walk into you know, you're you're I, for me. I'm thinking, oh my God, shadow. That's about two stops different than that highlight. Can I do it? Oh, uh, well, let me move it over here. You know, so I'm always thinking light and light calculations and stuff like that. So when I think of portraiture, I want to. If I have the option to uh, add light or adjust the light myself, I will. And as opposed to. I wouldn't call it necessarily a throwaway, but if I'm just if I just want to take a document and snap a selfie real quick, I'll do that too. So I'm not I'm okay with either one. And what about what about you, Ken? Has 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 the selfie has the self of uh, selfie of the self portrait changed in your mind uh, for you as an artist, like in some way uh, from that time to now? No, I. I I, for me, the self-portrait was always comical and mm -hmm. freewheeling and never uh, supposed to be a serious take on oneself. Um, if I were to show you some of the early self-portraits that I've done, uh, most of them would be on the um, comedy side, if not the sarcastic side. Um, I don't think I've ever taken myself seriously in a self-portrait. Uh, so yeah, even even in selfies, I don't take myself seriously. I think the most serious selfie I probably took was when I took a self a selfie with my my new camera, <laughs> and, I, mm, and I had the serious and I ser I had a serious look on my face when I did it, and 
I said, oh, no, I'll never share this with anyone. So it's like it's in the archive. It's there. Uh, it's not mm. something I will share. Uh, but the so, notion so of the selfie does and has had an effect on my mental approach to what is acceptable photographically as a self-portrait. And it's loosened up quite a bit. You know, I was going to say something very similar is that it's been it's it's freeing on one hand and it's a little more constraining and another it's freeing in that, you know, you can take a picture and you have the variety. You have a real camera and then you have your cell phone and then you can kind of think about what you want to do. And with the cell phone, primarily it's a wide angle unless you've got a, a later model on you. You know, you want to go through all the machinations of you know, lenses and all that. Don't, don't say there you go again. But I yeah, think but, people but, are doing like but, feature films with their iPhones. That's not the you point. Know? I'm talking about doing a feature film. So I'm a very specific image, which is the self portrait. And selfies are ubiquitous. I mean, it's it, your Instagram game because of the selfie people wanted to show what they were eating and themselves with their friends and with their you know on facebook too and all of these anything past myspace pretty much is i mean even tiktok is an extension of the video selfie i mean it's a it's an entire uh a little it's story. entire it's a short story but yeah it's a short story but my point is is that you know for us the the self-portrait was sort of this thing that every now and then you would sort of say, I'm going to take a photograph of myself. And it was very, uh, you know, you put a lot of thought into it. Now, whether you just did one, but let, 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 whether you just photographed yourself spontaneously or you made a point to get the right hat and the right scarf and the right coat and turn the collar up and you put the light here, that's a different thing. But my point is, is that, it was always very much considered. And uh, I don't think a lot of people put that much consideration into a selfie these days. They, you know, they go, they, they put the hip up, pip, 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 and then that's it. And yeah. they like, like it, they don't, they don't. And, and so I was just wondering, uh, has it changed for you? For me, it's changed in that it's freeing and that I am more likely to take a self-portrait. See, it was only 12 or 13 years as opposed to 20 between the, the two at the end and the other one and the first one uh, because film versus digital and, you know, and having more access to, uh, you know, lights and, 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 and all of that and being able to process it. You know, you don't have to go to a lab, process it and get a contact sheet and or slides and then scan it so it's much easier to do so uh it has it's a little free more freeing but at the same time it's in a weird way less valuable because i know i can just take a picture anytime i want of myself so i don't really consider a lot oh i should take a portrait of myself uh just for historical reasons, even so that my family has it, or if for whatever reason someone's looking at my work and they want to know who took this, that kind of thing. So I, that's, that's all I want to say. Yeah, oh, I, I think it's, it's the acceptability of the selfie as an advertisement, which is now acceptable, which means that our perspective on what we're able to do creatively can be loosened up to a point where we can make money off of a selfie with five minutes of investment in your photographic knowledge versus a whole half a day of setting up a shot. And they're now financially equivalent the same where before they weren't. Yeah, and I think the ability to capture that type of image um, now that it's world, now that anyone with a, f a phone can do it, as, democ as we all say, we've heard the term democratized photography. Well, it's the democratization of photography to the point where we are all on equal footing and we can all make the same amount of money regardless of whether you photographed it on an iPhone or so, whether you photographed it on a XD, X1D. So now, so what you're saying is it, it, it used to be more of a team sport where only there were a few players who got into the majors and some were in the minors and some people never got to play at all. And we're now, it's more like NASCAR where there's races all the time and there's a truckload of people and they can be 40 people on the field at the same time right but right but now that there's but of course that also means that uh you know if we want to keep that sort of analogy going uh now everyone is a driver now everyone is a mechanic 
Now everyone, you know, now now instead of just having 40, uh, 40 uh, raceways in the 40 states, now you have uh, 100 raceways in the 40 states. And you, now the amount of people who are looking has been cut in half <laughs> because you know, not that many people are looking. <laughs> right. Right, right. I mean, they even have a software called Photo Mechanic, and that's 20 some odd years old at this point. Yeah. So, yes, you're absolutely right. Yeah. So, okay. I hope Greg comes back soon because I wanted to ask him if what kind of watch he was wearing in the first, first photograph. It looked like a Hamilton Electric. I, I just wanted to know. Yeah. Well, uh, we can't really wait for that. We're out of time. We, we've we've gone over the 30 minute mark. So I'm going to close it out and say we want to thank everyone for joining us. If you have any comments or questions about what we've discussed, please leave a comment. We'll answer the comment. Or if you have if you want to join us, come on, join us and we'll be glad to talk photography with you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Greg Claycorn, thanks for him. Uh, for him, thank you for joining us. <laughs> I'm Kenneth Nelson. Mark Skinner, and we'll see you next time on Three Black Pride Grads. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.